Hi, I'm John, and this is Stupid Fast RC. Today, we are looking at TT Robotics Ghost Plus. It's freaking huge. Today, we are taking a look at the Ghost Plus from TT Robotics, which is short for Thunder Tiger. Now, Thunder Tiger, if you're not as old as me, you may remember made uh, originally motors for planes and uh, RC cars, which were nitro. So back, dare I say it, 40 years ago when I was doing this as a kid, um, they made RC motors and pretty good ones. Now, TT Robotics are doing lots of other stuff. If you hit up the TT Robotics site, you will see a lot of exciting stuff. And one of the things that you will see is this fairly exciting drone. Um, this hole in the front is where the battery normally goes. Like that. Now, what is cool about this drone? Well, uh, you may have already noticed, it's fairly big. In fact, it's freaking huge. It has a payload of 700 grams, which means you can carry a small handycam um, if you have the um, gimbal or the mount that goes on the bottom here. In fact, so a camera like this, the HDR CX405, only weighs 190 grams, and this thing, whoa, <laughs> this thing will take 700 grams. So it does come, well, this particular model comes with a Morpheus. H3D 360 gimbal. Um, now we're still getting the hang of the gimbal, but the gimbal, this gimbal is specifically designed to take a Hero, uh, a Hero 3. Now, um, Hero 3, and this is a Hero 3 Black. So uh, we had to go buy one of these because um, our original Hero is in the bottom of a lake. Um, one of our earlier videos, if you follow our channel. Now I'll just turn, power it up. The great thing about this is that the gimbal takes power to the camera and as you can see, oh I did touch it there, but let's just, so we can control the gimbal from here, pan and tilt, there's power to the camera so while the uh, drone's in the air you don't have to worry about uh, the camera running out of power. Uh, there is a video signal that goes back into that gimbal as well. Handy little little thing and the great thing about all of this is, uh, dare I do this, there you go, we can take the legs up. Now then the gimbal can take a 360 degree view and not have the legs in the way of the camera which um, I think is pretty awesome. That's uh, one of my favourite things about this. So massive payload and let's just put the legs back down. One of the complaints about these uh, drones on some of the other videos is that the legs are a bit lightweight and they snap. You can get spare parts, I've managed to do that. Uh, nice little feature on the top where you can see the battery life. You can see that we're uh, three bars off a full pack. Oh, that's not an original sticker. Um, powering it off and there. It has got return to home. We're going to demonstrate return to home in our video in a minute. The return to home is unbelievably accurate. We marked a spot on the ground. We're about 30 centimeters off. So uh, we flew the drone out probably 500 meters and hit return to home and it landed literally that far away from where it stopped. We were fairly confident it was going to do that because we've used this before on a couple of occasions and, we, and actually Tom and I were talking to each other and said, you know, that thing has landed almost exactly where it took off. And just to prove the point, we marked a tape X on the ground and 30 centimeters. The second time, it landed about 40 centimeters away from the spot. And I think really what happens at the last seconds, the last few seconds, it, it, uh, the crosswind just blew it off. But it was, it was destined to come right back to that spot. Really incredible. Uh, so the return to home is awesome. We've got uh, landing gear up. Uh, intelligent mode, which is basically whatever everyone else refers to as headless mode. Uh, take off landing, return to home, camera pan and tilt. That's roughly it for this uh, controller, which um, for the remote, which isn't probably the most amazing part. There is also an app. Now the app tells you uh, all sorts of things and oh, are we going to focus in on it? Yes, we are. Now, uh, the height, the altitude, 
but probably the coolest part is follow me and um, so just get that glare off there follow me and it does now we strap this iPhone uh, tentatively and gingerly to the back of a Thunder Tiger Jackal which we also reviewed earlier so we thought we'd keep the brands in line and uh, drive it up and down the street interesting very cool uh, the drone followed it everywhere and it's kind of creepy and scary all at the same time so that worked really well the only thing that we didn't get uh, functioning quite the way we wanted to was the camp the gimbal the gimbal uh, we're not completely across how that's that we was, was we should have panned and tilted it basically when it was up in the air that's what we didn't do uh early days for us on that stuff but really really cool um settings fired information what else does it do the user guide is also on the phone as well so all that stuff is there and if you go to the website which i recommend you have a do, have a look at is there are a few videos there of different versions of this ghost and it has thermal imaging uh, there are there are ones that are built specifically for fishing. I'm not sure that I would go fishing with a drone myself. Um, a fairly large fish dragging my thousand dollar drone or whatever it costs you and wherever you happen to be into the water doesn't exactly thrill me. But apparently people do do it. I haven't actually seen a video of someone doing that. But um, interesting all the same. So very very cool drone. The sheer size of this thing is astounding. These are 11 inch props. You can get 12 inch props for it. Um, and we have also managed to buy carbon fiber props. We haven't put those on because uh, rotating carbon fiber well, blades that are 11 inches long squishing through the air chasing you is a little bit scary even though these are still pretty strong I think carbon fiber are going to do a lot more damage when this we actually did have a little bit of a mishap and tilted this thing into the ground and these blades just kind of buried themselves up to about there so um, at that point Tom and I looked at each other and went let's not do the carbon fiber props until we fully understand this thing and maybe not at all so anyway that was yeah look listen to that that is kind of scary okay so uh what else do i like about this drone it's so easy to use and it's so stable in the air um crosswinds we've had it up in the air sort of 20 30 well, not 25 knot winds and it just sits there it it acquires um six to ten satellites i think uh, generally it won't won't go it won't take off without six and acquires the satellites and basically it is incredibly easy to fly the computer is flying this thing as soon as you let go of the sticks it just sits there and waits for left right whatever whatever you want to do um, there are some videos of some guys who have taken this thing up beyond uh, what uh, I'm sure their local legal requirements are and uh, they're on an island in fact and you can see the island is just a speck and all the cars and things are, are turned into ants basically it's incredible so what this thing is capable of is a little bit scary and um, I also do recommend that you you uh, check with the uh, the the legal requirements in your area in, in, in Australia it's Casa you need to actually understand that you can't take it up over crowds you um, there is a height restriction all these things and you can and you can tell what height it's on by looking at your app that's my pizza <coughs> So you can tell what a height it is by looking at your app so that you don't go over the, um, the legal limits. Keep it in with limits, drive it safely, and you'll have a lot of fun. But as I say, this is our the biggest drone we have, and I, and I really am enjoying flying this. This is a fantastic drone. Uh, Tom's not a big fan of drones, and uh, he really likes this one. So that tells you something. Uh, when I say to him, let's go and fly the drone, he's all over it. So if I say, uh, let's take one of these smaller drones out, he's like, eh, no. So, uh, a lot more to show you about this. We're going to show you some footage of it in the air. Thanks to Thunder Tiger for your help. With uh, We had a couple of questions here and there. We emailed them. They emailed us back. Uh, I had a, I had a, a, a mishap with the uh, magnetic compass early on. I managed to buy another one. So, you know, good indication that we can get spare parts for it, and that's all good. The TT Robotics guys have made some amazing stuff. They have made 
a, a six wheel drive trolley which will take 89 kilos so that's like a jet ski if you've got a stand up jet ski this thing has got a follow me mode you could put your stand up jet ski on and go down the beach now that's something we want to do as well uh, just saying TT Robotics if you want to throw one our way I'm kidding okay so really really cool stuff really impressed with their gear we also did the Toyota if you remember uh, the Toyota Hilux and uh, now we're going to take the Jackal and the Ghost Plus out for a bit of a drive Let's get into this. Now, in this little bit of footage here, we have hit return to home. And um, the first thing it does is it pulls up into the air, then it comes across to where it's supposed to land over the spot where it took off from, and then slowly comes down to the ground. Now, we've marked the X on the ground here. We did this a couple of times. Um, not always as accurate, but look here at how close this comes to the X fairly impressive and you just see that last second there a little bit of wind caught it and it was sort of coming right down on the spot uh, i've got to say that was fairly impressive we had a fairly good idea it was coming down close to where it took off but when we put the x on the ground that really told us what had happened and look at that oh my god that's pretty cool i mean considering it had gone away we didn't show the whole boring bit of this video but it went away about 600 meters and came back again so that was a fair effort i thought now this is it following the rc car down the road we have strapped an iphone to the roof of the car yes admittedly fairly risky but we did have it glass down and uh, as you can see reasonable pace not not super fast um, we've got it a little bit um, high and, and in some of the other videos we had it even higher just to see what was going on but um, it, you can't see in this video but this ground slopes a bit and we're a little bit concerned that um, if we weren't hands on the controls on the drone we might drill the damn thing into the ground if you know what I mean as, as we come back up the hill um, especially if it was in level flight so we weren't horribly sure about how that was all going to go and we didn't want to we didn't want to be chewing up the bitumen with blades uh, that doesn't go well and there you go so that landed again but didn't quite land on the x um, this is a very high aerial shot once again the drone is still following this car there and there's nobody controlling the drone i can tell you that for a fact because i was there on my own um, had the drone up much higher this time and uh, that's what it looked like from up there so probably if you were making an RC video you'd probably want to be a bit closer to your subject matter than this but still you know just gives you a bit of a feel for what's going on there a lot of bit of, a lot of turning and, and reeling here and I think some of that is because the vehicle was, the, the car was changing direction quite a bit and the drone was sort of going okay well, so where are we going now do I turn don't I turn so uh, no adjustments that I could see of on the um, computer to to account for that, but still, look, you know, not a, not a bad aerial shot of what's going down down on the ground, and um, you know, could have been a little bit closer, perhaps. It depends. I mean, and the scenery here is not very interesting either. I and mean, we we went to sp specifically to an area where there was no one, and uh, we didn't want to cause any dramas to anyone around us, just in case something bad went down while it was in. Um, full flight now the other thing and i think i mentioned this before to people um and it was pointed out by a viewer whose name i've forgotten but a drone it's only a drone when it's in fully autonomous flight otherwise it's a quadcopter the definition of drone by wikipedia is a vehicle in autonomous flight it doesn't have to be a quadcopter it can be a plane so as soon as you take over the sticks it's no longer a drone in this case it's a quadcopter interesting um useless bit of information for you uh, now no RC video is complete without a bit of a bash so we went for a bit of a bash unfortunately didn't have the good sand tiles on at that stage and it was a little bit boggy but this um, is one of our favorite cars um, the Jackal is an awesome uh, it's got an amazing amount of power for the size it really is a cool little car and uh, don't mind this at all and as you can see it can do lots of stuff so i hope you've enjoyed the video uh there's a couple more seconds left and uh don't forget to subscribe like comment and uh have yourselves a great day <laughs>